So as a creator, you might be looking at these creator laptops like this Asus ProArt and when you see the price tag, you're thinking, goodness me, who can afford this? And then you look at the gaming laptops, which actually come in much lower in the price range, but offer very similar specs. So when you're choosing between these options, there's a few things you need to look out for and some things that are different in gaming and creator laptops but let's have a look at what's the price difference and if you should choose one over the other. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So these two laptops are from Chill Blast and I'm gonna leave the link in the description below if you wanna check them out. But here's the smaller box. All righty. 90 watt power sprick and feels quite nice and small in the hand. This is very, very light laptop. Okay, we have Intel i7, not sure which one yet. And to be honest, even though this maybe comes across as a gaming laptop, the design is very, very minimal. I'm a big fan, honestly. I'm enjoying the minimalistic and square design. Nothing like fancy, Type-C port, USB Type-A, HDMI, and then the power plug. And then on the other side, we have Type-C, Type-A, full-size SD card slot, mic jack, I mean, it's got pretty much what you'd need in a small notebook like that. Passion for performance. Sorry, that box got a little bit ripped in the shipping. Ah. Ah. Sorry, chill bat. Last, if you expected that packaging back nicely. Okay, that's interesting. Anyone remember this design from the back? This is very, very similar to the Lenovo Legion laptop that we tested out earlier this year. It's still fairly slim. I think this is now 16 inch or something like that. It comes with two small screws. So I bet that's for the M.2 installation or upgrades there. All right. First of all, even though these being gaming laptops, what I like about these already is that it doesn't say gaming anywhere. Okay, we have the same i7 badge here, RTX badge. HDMI badge, stickers are slightly all over the place. Now we have a numpad on the side as well and a full size keyboard. Interestingly, the trackpad looks actually slightly smaller, but we'll check that out in a moment. If we look around the laptop on this side, then you can see a ventilation grill on here, type A and then headphone and mic combo on the left side. On the back side, we have a power brick, ethernet, RJ45, HDMI, then we have a type C, which looks like could be a Thunderbolt port as well. And then a mini display port there as well. And then two more type A ports on the side. Now the power brick that comes with this one is huge. I wish they did like power brick folds so you could fold the power bricks. But now that is a 300 watts power brick. We'll see how that does. Let's take a minute to set these laptops up. So first of all, to put in perspective, what's the difference in price? This Asus laptop over here right now goes for 2,800 pounds. It's absolutely ridiculous, okay? This is not even the latest version of this. There's a newer version of this Asus ProArt Studio Book as well. This 14 inch laptop is 1,300 pounds, okay? So it's less than half of the price. And then this one over here is 1548. So in terms of the price, there's a huge, huge difference. Let's have a look at the speaker quality difference Okay, there's a huge difference here between the 16 inch ones. This one is miles better than any of these. So this is all 100% volume and to be honest, the 14 inch and the 16 inch 
don't sound any different to me. In fact, I think the 14 inch sounds slightly better. The 14 inch seems to have a little bit of depth in the music. Whereas this one doesn't at all. So sound is obviously much better on the Pro Art book because they have actually paired up with a good sound guys from Harman Kardon so it should sound better because you're paying much more as well. Next of all the displays. So they are vastly different as well because this Asus Pro Art comes with an OLED panel. As you can see this is uh, pretty much 4K OLED panel here on the 16 inch. Whereas if you look at the Chill Blast here, this is a two and a half K display. It's IPS panel. It's 165 Hertz though. The Asus Pro Art is 60 Hertz panel. And this over here is also 2.8 or 3K display. And that's 90 Hertz. In terms of the refresh rate, that's much better on the gaming laptops. And that's usually the trend you're gonna see with gaming laptops. So sometimes you are paying more for the refresh rate on the gaming laptops. If you're not a gamer, if you're a creator, you might not you know need that refresh rate yeah it's nicer to have a smoother screen but actually it's massive hit on the battery life which isn't that good and i personally would prefer an oled version for example rather than a refresh rate because that will give you much more accurate display as a creator now not all ips panels are less color accurate but usually OLED panels will give you a much better viewing angle and all of that by the way this OLED is also hdr rated so you'll get much better dynamic range there as well so now looking at the video here on side to side by the way all of the screen have been put to maximum brightness here so if you were seeing a difference in there that is purely because of the OLED panel so I can straight away see that the OLED panel is much, 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 much brighter, as you can see here. In terms of viewing angles, they're actually not that different. The OLED panel obviously has better viewing angles, but it's also more reflective than these IPS uh, matte panels. In terms of the video resolution, yeah, there seems to be more detail on the 4K one as well, but actually these IPS panels are very, very impressive as well, especially the 14 inch here that looks like you've got loads and loads of pictures. Then when you look at the picture in here, it just looks very, very crisp. Another thing I'm noticing is that these two panels don't look exactly the same. There's slightly a different tint between those two panels. Like this is more kind of magenta on the blues and this is more kind of green on the blues like these blues aren't the same so basically you're not going to get the same color like these guys are completely different one is more greenish this is more magenta and this is somewhere in the middle like more green and i also think that this 14 inch goes slightly more brighter than this 16 inch chill blast laptop so if you're looking for a better screen as a creator then you're usually getting this with the creator laptops but if you're looking the best bang for buck and want to save some cash gaming laptops have come a long way and they have quite decent panels as well now you do want to make sure that you're not paying like ridiculous price for just a very high refresh rate because sometimes gaming laptops have like 240 hertz displays or something like that which is absolutely not necessary as a creator so make sure that you go for a version that doesn't have a high refresh rate because really above 60 hertz is really not needed as a creator so let's have a look at the specs of the laptops by the way i've just raised them in a different level just because in a moment we're going to do a performance test but i don't want them to exhaust into each other's exhaust and so you know mess up with the performance so now they're kind of blowing wherever so it doesn't really matter what these laptops are looking like but then the 14 inch here has an intel i7 12700h that's ridiculous it's got 14 cores and 20 threads that's absolutely ridiculous, ridiculous power in here. So we're going to see how much power we can get out of this and how well does this actually perform. And interestingly, if you see this laptop here, we've got 32 gigabytes of DDR4 installed, but there's only one stick installed, which in a way isn't the best performance for you, but at the same time gives you the best upgrade path, which is very interesting. Now you have to buy only one 32 gigabytes, boom, and you've got 64 gigabytes of RAM altogether, which is very, very good. So as you can see, the i7 can have DDR4 as well, because this is 12th gen, you can have DDR5, DDR4, both of them. 
We've got one terabyte of Samsung 980, very good SSD there as well. Obviously we've got the UHD graphics from Intel CPU. And then we've also got the GPU here as well. The GPU right now is running at 100% utilization because I am running OBS here as well. And I am recording 4K 50 frames per second, Acer 264. So the 14 inch has a 3050 Ti uh, GPU in here, but the encoders are all the same on all of the 30 series, so it shouldn't matter that much here. But you can see that we've only got four gigabytes of VRAM compared to more on these laptops. So if you're looking at this ASUS Pro out here, this has Intel i9 11900H, so i9, but from previous generation. And this one only has eight cores and 16 threads compared to the 12 cores and 20 threads. Uh, which the 14 inch has there. This one has 64 gigabytes of DDR4 installed. And this shows you that we've got four slots on the motherboard. So potentially we can have 128 gigabytes. We'll see uh, if that is true when we on do the back panel of the laptops and look inside the laptops what's that our ssd here is intel raid zero volume so it's interesting it seems like we've got two plus two terabyte ssd option and they're in raid zero to get bet best performance out there so maybe we've got two uh, kind of systems running there then we've got the intel usd graphics of the integrated gpu and then the NVIDIA RTX 3060 laptop GPU. And this one here has six gigabytes of dedicated video memory compared to the four on there. And then this laptop here is very similar to kind of the combination of both of these. So we've got the i7-12700H. We'll see how much better this one is in the bigger chassis, bigger cooling. Is that any better? 16 gigabytes of RAM, 4800 megahertz. So this is DDR5, the only DDR5 laptop, but we've got 16 gigabytes of it and then there's two slots occupied eight plus eight we've got the ssd which is samsung 980 again iris xe graphics that should be the same on both of these laptops interestingly on this laptop it says intel uhd graphics not iris xe graphics so that's interesting and then we've got nvidia rtx 3060 laptop gpu right now all of these laptops are on balanced power mode so we're letting windows decide they're not on high power mode or anything like that we've got cinebench 10 minute test let's hit start on all of them thermal throttling here already as you can see <laughs> here as well and here as well as you can see we are thermal throttling there in terms of power draw i'm just looking at the asus pro out here we're pulling about 48 watts the 14 inch is pulling about 34 watts there this 16 inch is pulling 92 watts 78 whoa that is pulling a lot a lot of power as you can see 120 watts maximum there this one here has hit 105 watts maximum but interestingly this package here is only 39 watts even though pl1 and pl2 limits are 115 watts here pl1 limit is 45 watts and pl2 limit is 109 watts and here this is 65 and 115 so interestingly the power limit is set the highest on the 14 inch laptop well let's have a look what the scores will be in the end of the tests so looking at the gpu temperatures because obviously the gpu can be connected to the same uh, heat pipes or the cooling system so sometimes when you have load on the uh, gpu can actually really heat up the cpu on the system as well so if you're looking at the 16 inch here with the rtx 3060 mobile version that is about 60 degrees right now we've got this um, here that is 58 degrees so this one is running cooler this gpu is pulling 26 watts and interestingly, this one here is pulling 48 watts. So that is pulling a lot more, like double the power pretty much compared to this one, but runs roughly about the same temperature. So that shows that this 16 inch cooling is much better than the Pro Art here. And if we're looking at the GPU performance here, then we're pulling about 22 watts on the 14 inch and we're about 72 degrees. So running the hottest on the 14 inch okay there's one minute roughly to go with all of the laptops and if we're looking at them now neither of them are actually thermal throttling because they've slotted into their tdp and they just run there all of them actually allow the laptop to first just go boom to high high uh, wattages and kind of boost to extreme power they might thermal throttle a little bit at first but then when the fans kick in and when they pulls down to the normal tdp 
were, were not actually thermal throttling. So the 14 inch is using the least amount of power so you can see that the 12700H has really been configured here to like 40 watts max to be pulled and then in here we're letting the 12700H 119 watts pretty much 120 watts which is absolutely absolutely crazy and here we can see 105 watts roughly pulled with the 8 cores but let's have a look at what's the actual performance difference what I'm wondering is does this 8 core perform better than the 12 core on this 14 inch laptop even though this uses so much more power but this one has so many more cores so that's going to be an interesting uh, thing here so this is the last uh, kind of role on this one everyone is running the last option here let's see what's going to be the scores interestingly this 14 inch also has the max temperature of 85 throttling has been set to much lower than any of the other ones the pro art hit 92 degrees and then this 16 inch hit 99 degrees the results are in and uh, they're very very interesting so the first spot goes to this 16 inch laptop because it absolutely hammers the power through with these 12 cores here you can see 13,763 points in 10 minute throttling test here okay this 8 core here got 9494 points which is um, not bad but quite a bit less compared to this 16 inch laptop there and then this one here is actually not far from behind with this 16 inch pro art at 8507 points but here's what i want to mention as you can see we have hit maximum degrees of 85c which means that this is really tuned down to throttle the cpu down to much much lower temperatures than this one here if we allowed this one to pull maybe 50 watts at first or actually just you know usually pull 30 watts or something like that through we would be performing much much better clock speeds and so on with this laptop which you should be able to actually change on the xtu of intel's profile because this is 12700 h so you might be able to change this on BIOS, the actual power settings, to let it run a little bit more. Which means that this laptop has the potential to actually beat this. Because as you can see, if you've got all the thermals, then you can get 13,763 points. But the thing is, this is still not as good as like the Lenovo Legion 5i, where we got even higher scores with exactly the same CPU that runs even cooler and even higher clock speeds. Now they have kind of cooled down. I want to do a single test of each of these to let it really see if you boost in terms of workflow, you know, when you're video, photo, or so editing, then you're actually not using the... 10 minute throttle test unless you like exporting the video then you're using kind of bursts load which we're going to do now whoa look at that single test we got 16,509 points that's crazy and in here 11,267 points so quite a bit more as well than the 10 minute tests and now the 14 inch 9,731 again the single test was higher than the 10 minute of this pro ad so it's very very impressive let's see what the blender benchmark is going to be with the gpus so here the gpu is pulling 120 watts something like that so there's much more better power on this 16 inch laptop for the gpu here the pro art is pulling about 86 watts even though they're exactly the same gpu there the temperatures are roughly the same on both of them which means actually the pro art is slightly higher which just shows that the 16 inch here has much better cooling compared to the pro art interestingly here on the junk shop scene the pro art seems to be pulling as much power as this 16 inch chill blast but on the classroom scene again we can see about 120 watts on this chill blast compared to about 82 on the pro art so now the 14 inch crashed probably because too much power going um you know and overheating and so the blender benchmark actually crashed we'll see if we can re-download it and redo it again but these to the 16 inch ones have completed and if you're looking at the monster scene results here then the pro art uh, has actually lower scores about single digit like percentage higher on the chill blast 16 inch which just shows that sometimes the gaming laptops can give you much more gpu power so let's say if you are a 3d creator and you use um, blender for example you get much better 
GPU or 3D performance on the gaming laptops just because the cooling is much better there. Now if you're looking at the junk shop scene then here the Chill Blast 16 inch got 172 points compared to the 527 points on the ProArt and this is another point here or difference between the gaming and workstation or professional creator laptops is that the drivers and optimization is much better on the actual creator laptops you can see they're running exactly the same gpu in fact the 16 inch here the gaming laptop has better cooling because you can see the monster one there runs a little bit faster but then at the same time the stabilization or utilization isn't quite the same I'm running exactly the same driver as well, by the way. I installed exactly the same driver on both of these laptops because it's the same GPU. It's a studio driver on both of them, but for some reason, this Chill Blast got three times lower score there on the junk shop scene. Something is quite not working, some kind of utilization driver, something bug. It could be a one-time thing, but this is something that I have seen usually happen more on the gaming laptops that's the stability of the actual hardware is not as good on the gaming laptops and if you're a professional professional creator then that's what you really need or what you are paying when you're getting like the likes of asus pro ad here but then the classroom scene again is quite a bit better on the actual chill blast 16 inch laptop there while we're at it let's talk about the keyboards and trackpads and that's another thing that's usually much better on the creator laptops now this keyboard on this asus pro ad i don't think this is a necessarily like a nice feel keyboard there or like a really really good keyboard i think it's somewhere average and I actually prefer a much better keyboard on this Zephyrus G14. You might have seen the review on the channel. This is the nicest keyboard I have ever used on any of the laptops I've ever used. Like my absolute favorite keyboard. If I could write all the emails on that one, I would. These two keyboards here are very, very similar. The Asus keyboard kind of feels a little bit more skinnier and thinner kind of clicks compared to this one here. It's a little bit more harder click and a little bit more spongy feel on this one. But then this one here is the actual lightest on the keyboard options. And if you look at the Asus Pro Art here as well, you've got something very interesting here. This special dial, as you can see, has lots of different options what you can do with it. For creators, these are like the fine little things that they have spent lots of time researching on this laptop to get it really, really good so that when you're on the go, you have the best kind of editing or performance on the creator laptops but at the same time if you're not really bothered about like these wheels and trackpads because you're gonna get your own mouse anyway on the go and maybe you're not so bothered about the keyboard and so on then the gaming laptops offer a much better performance or much better bang for your buck because you just get more for your money now the last thing to do is to actually open up these laptops and see what's inside let's do the pro art first and when we're looking at the screws these are actually torx screws and then both of the chill blast laptops are actually phillips heads so if you've got a prying tool then just on the bottom there you can get a little bit underneath some leverage and then we can pry this up Looking at this, we can see two thermal pads here. Let's have a look at this chill blast now. Opening up is much easier. We'll just pry or pull with fingers in the back there, a bit like that. It's very, very similar to the Asus Pro Art 16 inch. You have the two fans. Obviously here we've got these fans much deeper and much better kind of blowing here. Much more powerful fans here because deeper fans can move more air. But there's a similar thing going on that there's a few heat sinks going around here. So here we've got two heat sinks going over, like two large heat pipes there connected to the heat sinks where the fan's gonna blow through there and exhausting on the sides and there. And then there's also one bigger heat pipe going around on the left side and then one smaller side on the right side. Now, which is which? Because obviously there's one of them is CPU, one of them is GPU. I am guessing that this is the GPU here on the left side, just because that's usually what they do with gaming laptops. They want to put more power and more cooling on the GPU. So they cool the GPU down here on this side. And then this is the CPU here. Then we've got two RAM slots in here and we've got this like protective sticker that goes over them. 
to lock in which RAM do we have. Okay, we've got Samsung sticks there, which is very, very good. Very high quality RAM there. Two DDR5 slots there. You've got a Wi-Fi card here, which you can change if you want to. And then you've got two M.2 slots on this side. Obviously, one of them is already occupied, so we can easily upgrade by having a second one plugged into here. Seems like both of these are Gen 4 speed, so you can get some very, very fast storage. The battery is actually only 64.31 watt hours, so it's not the biggest battery. If you look here, they're roughly about the same size or take the same size inside this case but the ASUS one is 90 watt hours, so it's got about 30% more capacity on the ASUS um, one here, which for creators, that's again, why are you paying more for these little things? For ASUS, we can see there's one SSD here, and interestingly, it's been put like inside this kind of uh, a silver astronaut kind of costume. I'm gonna take this off to see what is going on here, but this is probably to have a better heat dissipation going on there. These are, I think, the Samsung 980 Pro uh, drive for, for the laptops seen similar kind of markings on them before and you can see two slots again on the asus side one here and then one over there again seems like they're exactly the same ssds there but similar thing you've got two pca gen 4 slots there on the motherboard obviously if i was you i wouldn't run them in raid i kind of think for create the laptops, ASUS, that's really mental and you shouldn't really be doing this because if anything happens, you lose the data on both of them, which is just mental. You don't need like an extra little bit of like performance. It's not worth it compared to the RAID. I would just have OS on one and then your projects on the other one rather than have them run in RAID. And here we can see some more RAM slots. So these are DDR4 and interestingly, there's like a heat sink being glued around these to kind of keep them cooler so this is like a little bit you can see like over engineering and trying to get it as cool as possible the actual operating system showed four sticks of ram being applied or can be applied i don't see that here you can't really install four sticks of ram in here you can see a chipset here so there's this little bit of heat sink here that is on the chipset and then you've got this heat pipe going all the way around there and then you've got actually more heat pipes here how many heat pipes are there one two, three, four, five, six heat pipes. One, two, three, four. So there's a few more heat pipes actually on the ASUS one here, but it's a little bit slimmer design of the heat pipes, as you can see here, to keep it a little bit more compact. Whereas in here, they've got a bit more room thought. We're gonna make the laptop a bit bigger, it's not that important but look on asus we've got everything cooled down or trying to cool down here this is the power delivery here uh, like vrms here there's a little heat sink on top there to keep that cool looking at these two side by side the asus one does seem like a bit more engineered option here whereas the chill blast one seems like there's few different configurations how you can do and have different ports as you can see there's two more like chips on the side here that you can extend to have different i so it's like kind of um, configurable laptop configuration so it's not like designed necessary for all this case it can all be like kind of reconfigured whereas on Asus this is like all one board and all together you've got the dial there as well so in here we can see some heat sinks again for some things as you can see there's one heat sink there and one heatsink there or thermal pad although this thermal pad is just being like kind of glued to the back of the plastic case so it's not going to give you that much um cooling actually this is actually metal or aluminium or something like that so you do get some kind of heat dissipation even when gluing this on there so you've got two going let's see where are they oh very interesting I mean, look at that. You've got a 14 inch laptop and look how much they have packed into here. There is two heat sinks for one SSD on here and then you've got another empty slot there so you can easily add another one in there, which is fantastic. You don't usually see that on laptops that size. You've got your Wi-Fi antenna and Bluetooth card that is upgradable. Uh, would be nice to have this these antennas actually glued in there as well So they're not gonna get loose and then you've got your RAM sticks here. Obviously, this is DDR4 You've got one stick installed Kingston Fury 32 gigabyte kit. So very good. I've got exactly the same one 
in there so i could easily just upgrade this to 64 gigabytes so i am liking this a lot the battery here is 46 watt hours so not that big look how easy this is to upgrade your system add another ssd in there pop it in there no problem pop in another stick of ram no problem you've got gpu and cpu cooling here only with two heat pipes here so the cooling is very very limited and that's why it's pulling much you know slower wattages but we're still seeing very very good temperatures there yes if you put them head to head you do get more with the crater laptop there's more optimization everything is higher build quality screen is perhaps better overall experience yes you're gonna get better experience with the creator laptop but then at the same time performance best bang for buck is much better with the gaming laptops and as you can see here on these versions here for less than half the price you can get the same if not the better performance and depending even which creator you are whether you're a 3d creator or photo creator or video creator you might even get better performance out of a gaming laptop than a creator laptop even though the creator laptop is more than twice as expensive so for example this 16 inch chill blast here i think would be great for video editing because it packs a ton a ton of power what i also like about these laptops compared to maybe some of the other laptops that i've tested on the channel is that even though being gaming laptops these look very very slick and smart and even if i turned up with this in a you know if you're a creator or whatever you can still kind of get away with this without being ridiculously you know gamery design which i'm not a big fan at all so i really like the design and to be honest in my opinion here this 14 inch is actually the star of the show to pack that much power in such a small form factor with such a small price point that is seriously amazing and to still look very very decent i think this is a great option for anyone who's looking for laptop for school or work that actually packs a ton of power as well but looks very very smart like a business laptop than very very good options now the build quality you can feel it's not as good like the screen flexes a bit more and then the keyboard flexes a little bit more you can see the screen here goes wobbly wobbly but then the thing is you get what you're paying for and you get much more performance with these gaming laptops so then let me know what you think in the comment section below would you choose a creator laptop or a gaming laptop if you want to check out these laptops i'll leave the links in the description below and thanks for watching likes and subs and i'll see you next time bye bye